Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our OTT webinar, which is where we're going to be inspired by Guyana. So while you're all taking your seats metaphorically, uh, we're just going to have a look at the, uh, the beauty of Guyana. We've got some amazing pictures of the destination. So you'll see as we go forward, just as we're waiting for people all to join. Did you know that Guyana is the only country in South America to have English as its official language? Quite incredible. Guyana actually translates to land of many waters is from a Native American language referring to the many rivers that, that are running through the country. So Guyana is one of the most biodiverse countries on the planet with over 900 species of bird, 6,000 species of plants, 700 species of fish and 225 species of mammals and counting. Now the moniker of Guyana is the land of the giants as its ecosystems are able to sustain vibrant populations of some of the world's giant species, like the jaguar, giant anteater, giant river otter, harpy eagle, anaconda, I know that's a snake, <laughs> and the oripama, uh, which is one of the world's largest freshwater fish, largest. The Kaita Falls in Guyana is one of the world's largest single drop waterfall by volume of water. And the national motto of Guyana is one people, one nation, one destiny. And I love the idea that they have a national motto. It's just amazing. We don't have one in the UK. I don't know about the US. Uh, I don't know about anywhere else, actually. But one people, one nation, one destiny is very unifying, I feel. Guyana is one of the most uncharted destinations on the planet, with very few people having visited the remote, dense hinterland. And in fact, an impressive 85% of Guyana is made up of tropical rainforest. Wow. So that's one of the lungs of the world. Really, really, really important country for that very reason. We've got to look after our rainforests. And we're soon ready to begin. If you've just joined us, we're just looking at some wonderful photos of Guyana. And we're hearing some really interesting facts as well. So the Victoria Amazonica, or the giant water lily, is the national flower of Guyana and was the inspiration for the structural design of London's Crystal Palace. Who would have thought that? That's actually a really good quiz question. <laughs> Amazing. Another good quiz, quiz question, I should say, is uh, Guyana and more specifically the tabletop of Mount Roy Rima were the inspiration behind Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World about the discovery of a living prehistoric world full of dinosaurs and other primordial creatures. So Walter Riley sponsored four voyages to Guyana in search of the legendary El Dorado, which was said to be located near the mythical Lake Parima in the Guyanan Highlands. And that must be the amazing canopy of the, of the rainforest. I think if you're a nature lover, you have got to go to Guyana. And if you're a, an amateur photographer, or even a professional photographer, well, you just would never put your camera down. And that's that beautiful waterfall, just incredible. Right, okay, so we're going to begin the webinar and we're going to start by um, introducing the panelists that have joined us today. So I'm just going to say hi. Hello there, I'm Julia, as you know, from OTT. And now I'd like to introduce our wonderful panel. Uh, we have uh, Nicola Balram, she's from the Guyana uh, Tourism Authority and she is actually uh, all the way from Guyana today. So give us a wave, Nicola. <laughs> that's it and we have Claire Thorne uh, she's got the wonderful title of wilderness explorer and that's exactly what she does she even writes some um, uh, guidebooks as well so you know what an adventurer you are Claire uh, we have uh, Kate uh, McWilliams as well uh, she's from the uh, UK team of uh, the Guyana Tourist Board and Tourism Authority and we also have um, George Leonard and today he's actually going to be managing the chat uh, so, you know, I hope all of you will, um, you know, say what you think about Guyana and in, enjoy this because there's so much to learn. Uh, so, um, just before we, we really get into a discussion about um, Guyana and there's a little bit of a presentation, first of all, we're just going to launch a poll and just see how many of you actually already sell Guyana. So, here we go. Okay, so have you ever sold a trip to Guyana? Yes, once. Yes, on more than one occasion. No, never. No, but I've had some interest from clients. So it's be quite interesting. So it's great for the team to know. Right, so 76% of people 
uh, don't look like they have ever sold a holiday to um, or a trip to Guyana, but some of you have, which is great. Well, the whole point of this webinar is to introduce the destination to you so you can feel confident and know a bit more uh, from, from there. So there we go. So any comments on that team, just to begin with? I think that isn't a surprising figure to us. Guyana is very much an undiscovered destination. So we hope this opportunity will give us uh, the chance to put it on the map for a few people. So we're not surprised to hear that the vast majority of people that have signed up have not sold a trip to Guyana. Absolutely. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kick off with a very short um, video uh, of the destination, which is always wonderful to, to look at and to watch. And uh, from there, we'll have some short presentations about Guyana. <clears throat> and then we'll meet again and have a little bit of a chat through and answer any of your questions. So do feel free to put questions into the chat that George can answer. And also generally at the end, so that the panel can answer as well. <clears throat> so please enjoy. As the world experiences a new norm, Let's take a moment to slow down, to refocus, reimagine, dream. Let's dedicate the time to take it all in. We are gaining a fresh understanding of how connected we truly are and gaining a new appreciation for all we have. The freedom to explore new places, meet new people, experience new things. We have much to be grateful for and to look forward to. Our friends and loved ones, the memories we share, the new experiences we will have, the new friendships we will make. Those days will return and when it is safe to travel again, we will be here waiting for you waiting to say, welcome back to nature, welcome to Guyana. Thank you for that, Julia. Um, hi everyone, my name is Nicola Balram and I am the Senior Marketing Officer at the Guyana Tourism Authority and I am based here in Georgetown, Guyana. Next slide, please. Before going a little bit more into the details of the destination, I just wanted to share some of my personal highlights. Um, this is one of our highest attractions here in Guyana and the one that any traveler and most travelers actually always incorporate into their list. Um, this is Kaitor Falls. It stands at 741 feet or 226 meters of a sheer drop waterfall. And it's quite an amazing feat um, to go and see. One of the biggest pulls and draws of this particular attraction is that it's just you and nature. Um, you and your small group that will be able to go there and just have that falls all to yourself. There are no rails. Um, and it's just quite something amazing to see. And if you are lucky enough, there, are, there have been tours in the past that actually let you overnight um, at that guest lodge to have a bit more of a rustic adventure and wake up to see that falls in the morning. Can I have the next slide, please? So I imagine that we do have a bit of a mixed audience and I know for many people, they have not yet sold a trip to Guyana. So before we get a little bit more into the type of experiences, we just wanted to share some basic facts and figures to kind of put Guyana on the map in your mind per se. So Guyana is a small country um, in terms of relative size to other neighboring countries. It's found in South America. It's the only country in South America where English is the native language. And because of that, you will be able to have very easy conversations with a lot of our locals here in the country and a lot of our indigenous peoples as well. Although it's found in South America, our history and our culture, especially along the coastland, is very much of a Caribbean style. And through your trip to Guyana, you'll be able to see that Caribbean feel and Caribbean culture mixed in with the South American landscape that makes us uniquely Guyanese. I know one of the major questions right now is how to get to Guyana. Uh, from the UK market, we do have the best flights through Barbados and even through Suriname that you can then hop over to Guyana or you can travel through the US, through Miami or New York. Knowing that right now we are in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Guyana airport borders are not going to be open until September 20th to 
Guyanese citizens abroad and then until um, so August 28th, sorry, to Guyanese citizens abroad and September 30th to international travelers. But we know that this is still a fluid um, situation. And during that time, we are doing everything here with our local lodges and local tourism providers to ensure that it's a safe destination when travel is open again. One of the things I didn't want to highlight is that our cases are relatively small compared to the rest of the world. We are now at 306 cases, um, positive cases so far, and we have 186 recovered cases. Can I have the next slide, please? Now, the other panelists will get a bit more involved in some of these aspects, but from someone now learning about Guyana, um, and as a local Guyanese as well, we do have a lot to offer as a destination. But how do you put that into words? As for the Guyana Tourism Authority, we best find that although the experience is something that's undescribable, we find that you can put it in these five main categories or five main experiences. We are a nature and wildlife destination. We do have amazing active and adventurous exploration activities here. We are full with culture and heritage, and especially with our indigenous peoples and their work with the environment. Birding is also a big draw for our destination. We have over 820 unique species of birds that's specific to Guyana or the Guyana Shield, which was seen in the last picture. And we are also big in conservation and safe travel, which is scientific, academic, volunteer, and educational travel. And it's something that we are quite passionate about in developing Guyana as a sustainable destination for tourism. One of the most unique things about any experience and any trip that you will be able to plan here or come and visit yourself is that although we do have these five main categories or pillars of tourism, as we call it, one experience can touch two to more of these experiences. So you can be on the canopy walkway as highlighted in this picture of nature and wildlife and you can go bird watching and wildlife spotting and learn about why this was built, why the community, community came together in the first place. Now with that being said, and just a little taste of what Guyana has to offer, I'd like to introduce you to Claire Thorne of Wilderness Explorers. This is the local DMC here in Guyana and she is also the author of the Brat Guide, which tells you a lot of information about this destination and which she's proudly holding in this picture here. Claire, over to you. Thank you very much, Nicola. That was great. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, can we move to the next slide, please, Julia? We're starting off with a map of Guyana. Um, Guyana is roughly the size of Britain, to give you some context, but with only three quarters of a million people, 90% of whom live along the coast and are at Georgetown. We only have one major road through the country from Georgetown to Lethem on the Brazilian border, so much of our travel is also by boat and small aircraft. Lodges often only have a maximum of eight rooms, so space sometimes is really at a premium, which means planning a trip to Guyana is most easily done through an operator who can coordinate all the logistics so that we can be sure that we have a riverboat waiting for your clients and the right guides at hand. This isn't an easy destination for an independent traveler, so this is a great option for you selling trips to your clients, looking for one of the most off the beaten track corners of South America. Next slide, please, Julia. So here is a slide of Georgetown, which is our gateway based on the Demerara River here. It's definitely worth a couple of days to experience this curious blend of multi-faith, colonial history and architecture, amazing street markets and culinary experiences. On the left of this slide, we have Delvin Adams, who is getting a real name as being one of the top chefs in Guyana. And his backyard cafe is somewhere that we sell on tour and was recently featured in Gordon Ramsay's Uncharted programme. Your guests in Georgetown can stay in a variety of hotels, including the lovely Colonial Cara Lodge and even the Marriott Hotel for those looking for an international brand with a swimming pool. The excursions here include early morning bird watching in the gardens where you can see up to 200 species of birds even before you go out into the jungle. You can hand feed manatees in the national park or sip ice cold beer in the old cricket ground at Border. And we also offer evening sunset tours on the river, 
sipping a sundowner whilst watching the birds come into roost as the sun sets over Georgetown. From here, and next slide please, Julia, you can take a day trip to Kaitur, which Nicola has already covered. It's just over an hour's flight from Georgetown, and when your clients get there, they may be the only people there, apart from the other people on their small plane. As you can see, it's mouth-droppingly beautiful. It's five times the height of Niagara, but hardly anybody has ever heard of it. Apart from looking at the fantastic falls, you can also see some wonderful bird life, like the orange Guyan and cock of the rock. Also, the tiny little golden frog who lives all his life in the same plant. If you have very adventurous clients, we can offer them five day treks up the gorge to the falls, ending with a stay at the simple lodge at the top. You can also do this, you can offer this to clients an overnight stay flying to and from the falls. And this means you have the privilege of staying there at night, having the falls completely to yourselves and experiencing thousands of swifts coming to roost behind the falls at dusk. It really is one of the world's most beautiful natural experiences. Next slide, please, Julia. Moving into the rainforest, which covers 87% of the country, we offer a really deep, immersive experience. We stay in community-run lodges so that the money that your clients are spending in country goes straight back to local communities, which Kate will cover in her presentation. Here is some of the purest wildlife spotting you can get in the Amazon basin. We have up to eight species of monkeys, numerous birds, countless trees, insects, and colorful frogs, and of course, key species like this giant river otter and the mighty jaguar. Here we have English speaking guides who can talk to you not only about their communities, but also key elements of Guyanese life, such as cricket, rum, beer, curry, and even Eddie Grant, who is Guyanese. The communities of Rewa and Sarama are wonderful locations to learn about the rainforest and also at a rainforest lodge, which is situated at the base of the canopy walkway, seen here on the left of the slide. Come here at dawn or dusk and a sip a, a soft drink and look at the rainforest coming alive from a unique vantage point. Last slide, please, Julia. From here, we can take your clients even further south into the Rupununi, where you can see some magnificent species like this giant anteater. Rupununi has beautiful wildlife rich savannas which flood to be like a mini Pantanal in the rainy season, which is May through July. Here your clients can stay at popular wildlife lodges. They can stay at Karanambu Lodge and go out in the morning to see giant anteaters like this before breakfast. Or go out in the rivers in the afternoon and watch the birds. And finally sip a rum punch whilst watching giant water lilies open at night. Here we stay in lodges or in ranches, and then we fly your clients back to Georgetown and they can extend their trip either on one of our river resorts or maybe combining with a trip to one of the Caribbean islands or one of the other Guyanas. That's a very brief overview of what Guyana has to offer. I'm going to pass you over now to Kate. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, and thank you, Claire, that was great. And um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, so next slide please Julia. So one of the beauties of Guyana really is the mix of different um, cultures and ethnic backgrounds. In Georgetown, is, as Nicola mentioned, in the coastal areas, there's a very distinct Caribbean culture, whilst in the interior vis visitors can stay with indig indigenous communities and learn about lots of different ways of life whether attending festivals or staying with the community or perhaps exploring the heritage in Georgetown, Guyana's people really bring the country to life. And of course, they're a huge part of the visitor experience. In this image here, this is the Mikushi village of um, Sarama. And this was the first example of what we call community owned and led tourism. And it started as just a small guest house. The beauty of this form of tourism is it employs villagers on a, on a shared and rotational basis, which means a large percentage of the villagers can be employed by this, um, by this type of community tourism. Previous to these tourism opportunities, 
a lot of the young young males, particularly males, had to find work by leaving uh, the villages and going to work in industries such as kind of oil or mining. So this provides a fantastic source of employment. Um, the, the locals don't always dress in these, these clothes. These are kind of cultural celebrations or, or exhibitions that um, the community do, not just for tourists, but also in local competitions and to take around the world to preserve their culture. And visitors in the last few years, visitors increasing interest in these indigenous cultures has really promoted a resurgence and a pride in Guyana's um, cultural heritage and, and the development of these cultural groups. So over the last few years and since, since Sarama was, was created, Guyana has been recognised all the way around the world for its sustainable tourism credentials and this model of community tourism, which is being supported both by the Guyana Tourism Authority, but also by the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs. So since Sarama was established, a number of other communities are now offering these unique community-led experiences for travellers. And this helps to support environmental protection. These communities obviously have a very low carbon lifestyle and they're very committed to protecting and preserving their local customs but also their local and natural environments that they call home. And because Guyana is, as Claire and Nicola mentioned, is South America's only English-speaking country, visitors can communicate with their hosts um, very naturally and without needing a kind of translator. So in this slide here we've got some lovely images of two of my absolute favourite lodges in, in Guyana. One of them is Rewa Eco Lodge um, and one of them is Atta which Claire has already mentioned. So Rewa is actually located on the confluence of two rivers um, and it's a great location for exploring nearby rivers and rainforests and seeing local wildlife. And one of the things that I most loved about staying in Rewa is you stay in these small huts you can see in the photos with the thatched roofs and the windows are open, you sleep under a mosquito net and in the morning you wake up just to the sound of howler monkeys and then you walk out of your lodge and above you there's just all kinds of different fantastic colourful birds such as macaws and hundreds of different types of hummingbird. So you really do feel so immersed in the middle of the jungle. And then at a rainforest lodge that Claire mentioned, again, is in, is in a kind of, um, it's in a, it, just in the heart of, of the rainforest as, as well. And the beauty of that property is it's located near to this canopy walkway, which was mentioned before, which is located about 30 minutes, um, 30 metres, sorry, above the rainforest floor. So it enables you to kind of be, be up there with all the kind of birds and the species that live in the canopy. So I wanted to just give you a quick brief overview of the OTT course and um, why have we set up the OTT course? So as you probably alluded to in the, in the poll at the beginning, Guyana gets very few visitors and it's a very undiscovered destination in South America. So we really do want to put Guyana in the map, on the map. Um, we want to encourage um, those that are really interested in a very off the beaten track type of trip to visit Guyana. Guyana is quite logistically challenging, as Claire mentioned, so it can be very difficult for an independent traveller. So therefore, we wanted to show the travel retail staff and our tour operator partners how you can book Guyana and um, what, what is included in a typical itinerary and what trade friendly partners you could book those trips through as well as the contacts of the local companies in, in Guyana. And then of course because, because of the pandemic that's going on at the moment we can't do the face-to-face -face meetings that we would normally do so this is another opportunity for us to give people the information that they're looking for without unfortunately being able to go to the various events that we normally, we normally attend. So what does the Guyana course include? Um, firstly, if anyone's joining us from um, other destinations, it's going to be available not just in English, but also in German and in Dutch, um, because we do have that relationship with Suriname and Amsterdam has direct connections into Suriname. It's going to have four modules, as, as you can see in this slide. So Guyana essentials, nature, wildlife and birding, cultural, culture and heritage, and community tourism and eco lodges. And then as well as that, it's going to have a lot of practical information. So sample itineraries, different operators that sell Guyana to the trade, images and incentives. 
So in terms of incentives, we're going to be launching this course on Monday. We're going to be sending out an, out an in eShot so that everybody can kind of complete the course. And for the first 15 people that complete this course, um, we're going to be sending them out a Guyana Brat guide, which was written by our friend Claire, who, um, who presented earlier. I'm not going to go into any more detail because we obviously want people to log on to the course and to and to complete uh, the modules. Um, but we would um, we'd, we'd we'd like to give um, OTT uh, say a big thank you to OTT for giving us this platform and for organising this webinar. And I think we're now going to move on to a panel discussion. So if you do have any questions. Um, please do either put them in the chat box or in the Q&A and we'll try and integrate them into the discussion. Wonderful, it's so incredible to see this destination. I mean, 85% or 87% covered by rainforest. It's such a special country. It's almost a UNESCO country, isn't it? And he's protecting, but at the same time, you must feel like um, a real adventurer and explorer going to see it. There's very few countries in the world which are so unspoilt, I, I can imagine. Um, and giant animals, well, no doubt, because they've got so many lovely things to eat. <laughs> um, so that'd be really, really good. Um, I think you mentioned, you, you missed, missed saying that we have also a course going live in the US as well, don't we? Yes. So I think some people yes, have Julia, joined we've... us today. Yes, so we've got a course going live in the US, we've got another course going live in Germany and one in the Netherlands. And one in the Netherlands, as well as the UK, but UK's first and it's Monday, which is fabulous to know. Um, so, and it's wonderful that you can all join us here today as well. <clears throat> so, let's see, um, is there anything that agents should think about, sort of possibly maybe any caveats to selling Guyana because of, of the type of destination it is? I mean, you'd, maybe you have to be quite you know, consider what type of clients are going. Do they need to be really healthy and, you know, is it accessible for people that have, you know, accessibility problems, for example, or, you know, do, do we have to kind of health check uh, the, the travellers or not? we don't need to worry too much? They can just sit quietly and watch the birds, for example. I can answer that one. Um, okay. I'm, I'm asked this question very often. You know, certainly we can accommodate um, people with disabilities who might want to go a bit slower. We can arrange to have guides that will take it at their own pace as well. Part of the adventure of going to Guyana is actually um, the, the destination itself. But once you get there, you can actually travel quite slowly, take time on boat transfers, do a lot of your animal watching from the river as well. So um, we can accommodate all ages, um, people with dietary requirements. We, we just need to be pre-warned, but um, in terms of, you, know, you don't have to be super fit, super, super keen to run up a mountain. You can take things at your own pace. Wonderful. And um, can uh, agents dynamically package a trip uh, to Guyana? Is it possible uh, for them to do that? Well, Kate? I think it is challenging to book a trip to Guyana and to dynamically package. Um, on the OTT course, we will be including a list of um, trade friendly operators that sell Guyana and as well as a list of um, um, approved DMCs or local tour operators in Guyana. So we will be providing all the contacts for the tra travel agents or retail staff to book book trips. Um, having said that, dynamically packaging, contacting lodges um, or, you know, by yourself or trying to book trips by yourself, perhaps contacting local airlines can be challenging. Mm -hmm. um, Wi-Fi isn't necessarily readily available all the time in all of these lodges, so sometimes it can take a bit of time for people to get back to you. And distances can be long and journeying around Guyana can take lots of different forms of transportation. So visitors should expect to combine, you know, river boats with perhaps some small aircraft. Some of those might be booked as a, as a charter, but some of them might be booked exclusively for the group, et cetera, et cetera. So I think really dynamically packaging is possible. I mean, it might be that you do one section with one local DMC and another section with another local DMC, or perhaps you do one section with a trade partner and then another section independently. Um, but I think we we do want to kind of make people aware that it's, you know, it's an emerging destination. Tourism is, is um, in its infancy in the destination. So perhaps it's not as easy as other Caribbean destinations. I don't know if you've got anything to add, Claire. Uh, what I was going to say is because some people, you know, want to travel with a small group, we've created some really good um, scheduled departures that you can buy into for your clients. So they get to see the, the highlights of the country 
but without the logistical issues of arranging charters and so on. So that's a fun way to travel, to be on a South American safari with a small group of people as well. Oh, I think it's wonderful that it's not really polished. It's really mm. exciting. You would feel um, in going there that, you know, you would feel quite a pioneer, I think, in many ways, and, and right. an adventurer. And if you're not too concerned about mobility, then I think, you know, how great that you can even go to those types of destinations as well. So you're just mentally adventurous and, and you can be accommodated in, even in Guyana and see the incredible giant animals and beautiful birds. I mean, the birds seem amazing. So um, you mentioned about the Caribbean being quite close by and being a kind of neighborly destination. So I think it lends itself to a sort of two center type of holiday. Is that correct? And can you kind of combine the two? Yes, I could say that one. Um, yes, you can. I know for a lot of UK travelers too, Barbados has had the best connection to Guyana. So we have seen some travelers spend some time in Guyana and then go to Barbados and spend some days there before returning back to the UK. We've also seen a lot of travelers do what we would call the three Guyanas tour and wilderness explorers can go a little bit more into this because they've actually created an itinerary about it and have actually carried persons on this. So you can combine Diana with Suriname and French Guyana as well to get that all encompassing South American um, experience, especially if it's your first time now coming to South America. Yes, that's very exciting. Claire, did you want to add to that? Well, yes, we did develop the Discovering the Hidden Guyanas tour because for many people, this might be the only time they come to this little corner of South America. And one of the most um, famous travel books or adventure books is Papillon, which um, celebrated 50 years last year. And we found that many of our clients were inspired by Papillon and wanted to trace the footsteps of, of, of that book as well. Um, also then going over from Guyana to Suriname, um, you know, wonderful architecture there and going over to the French Guyana where there is a space center. We also have wonderful turtle watching all along this wild coastline of the three Guyanas. So we offer a combination of very unusual pack, um, concepts for, for clients wanting to go off the beaten track. Sounds amazing. So um, in working with the trade um, historically, Kate, I mean, how, how has that gone? Are we now looking to sort of embrace the trade a lot more in opening up the destination? You mentioned that this is quite a sort of an emerging destination quite early in the tourism cycle. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, um, I have to say, um, Claire and her, her partner, Tony, have done a great job at Wilderness Explorers of, of working with the tour operators in the UK and setting up some, some product. So we're lucky to have the support of quite a few tour operators in the UK. And I would say also in other countries like the Netherlands and also um, the USA. Um, but I think we want to certainly do more um, with agents throughout the country. Um, we want to showcase that there is a wonderful product out there. We're finding that there is a trend for people looking for really off the beaten track destinations destinations, perhaps destination, destinations that have very strong sustainability credentials. So we think now is a great time um, to be to be um, sharing some of those messages. Um, and we're also wary that, you know, there's a lot, lot of kind of British Guyanese living in, in the UK or in other countries. Okay. And, you know, I think there's an opportunity um, for, for, for perhaps when, when they go home to visit the family, perhaps do a small tour or perhaps see some, some, some of the country. So we're also hoping to work with agents that perhaps typically would perhaps just sell flights to the Caribbean or flights to um, Guyana, but then maybe be, be able to add on some, some shorter tours for those trips. So this is exciting and we're hoping to work with the, with the, um, with the trade as much as possible. So this is uh, the next step for us, really. Fabulous. And uh, finally, with uh, Nicola, the way in which the destination is opening following COVID, you, you, you mentioned that you've had um, a few cases, uh, you know, which no one wants any cases. Um, but uh, I love how you said the survivor rate rather than the other way around. I mean, it's so much, I wish we would do that here. It's a lot more refreshing way of describing things. But um, so how is the destination opening up in terms of COVID? Uh, I mean, there must naturally be lots of social distancing with so much space. But um, do you have any kind of rules to be aware of or things that um, the agents need to be mindful of to let the consumers know about coming to the destination, particularly to protect um, all of the people living there? 
Sure. Um, so in terms of what we are doing locally here in Guyana, mostly on the city scene and the more crowded areas, which is Georgetown, which you're going to get into. Right now, it is mandatory masks for public spaces. But when you get into the interior, they do have, there is a lot of natural space there that lends itself to it. And a lot of the lodges and a lot of the accommodation in Guyana are adopting their health and hygiene safety protocol, which will follow the general international rules of wearing masks, sanitizing, as well as social distancing. Well, our airports are not open at the moment for travelers, but one of the things that we are putting that is in place right now for repatriation flights that are coming back and will be extended for travelers as well, is that they do have to get a negative PCR test before they are allowed to go on the plane. It is required to wear masks on the plane as well. And when they do land in Guyana, they will be disinfected before they come into the country. When you say disinfected, just to hang on to that. <laughs> we're not hosed down or anything. <laughs> no, 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 not, not in that sense. What does sense. that mean exactly? It's a very light spray that goes over your baggage and over your personal. It's not sticky. It doesn't oh. um, stay on you in that sticky sense, but it just does help to disinfect you before you come into the airport. Oh, do you know what? I think I've had that every time I've gone to New Zealand, which is where I grew up, in the mm. plane as you land, they run through it all the way down. And we all get sprayed. Is that what you mean? Do you mean sprayed in the aircraft or sprayed in the airport? In the aircraft and in the airport. So oh, both times. Twice. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, um, George, I know you've been managing the chat, and the chat looks like it's been really busy. I'm sure there must be some questions coming through that you'd uh, now like to take over and talk to the panel about. Hi, Julia. Yeah, thanks everyone for, for getting in touch in the chat. Um, apologies, I think I might have been responding to people individually. So uh, if, if my answer didn't come up publicly, uh, my apologies. Um, so yeah, we've had some great questions. Um, we've had from Lydia. Um, Lydia's wondering, how long do visitors typically spend in Guyana? And um, can you easily travel between Suriname, French Guyana and Guyana? Um, would, who would like to take that one? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we tend to find that people just going to Guyana, if they're coming from the UK, maybe 10 to 14 days is an ideal time. Um, but to get between the three Guyanas, even though they're right next to each other, and of course now we have more complications with you know different flight situations, it's, it's a little bit more difficult and that's why you really need to you know, work with a good local DMC who can explain the different routings. For example, you cannot fly directly between Guyana and French Guyana, but you can do interesting ferry journeys and river journeys along the corrupt coast as well. So I think we really, um, and in the course we'll be showing you how to develop itineraries that combine the three. Brilliant, thanks Claire. Um, and then from Karen as well. Karen was wondering about, um, are there any vaccines that, that need to be taken before traveling to Guyana, if you're traveling from the UK, say? Um, Kate, I don't know if you, if you wanted to take that one. I mean, it really does depend on the season and on where you're going. So it would be different in the wet season and the dry season. I mean, we, because we're a tourism authority and not a doctor, we, we do say that it's best to consult your doctor because obviously it is up to the individual in terms of what, what vaccinations they, they take. Um, but um, yes, we, you, you would normally need to take some and have some precautions. So we would advise everyone to consult the doctor a good, good, well ahead. Claire might be able to add a bit more specific information yeah. to that. You definitely need a yellow fever certificate to enter Suriname and I think also for Guyana and it's once you've had it once then you can carry that, that's fine. Um, yes of course you do need to check with your doctors but British passport holders do not need visas to travel into Guyana. If they are going to then add on Suriname then they do need to get a visa waiver but your operator can guide you on how to do that. Is that is that the same for the US as well? Because I know we've had had a question from Lisa um, about visas from the US. It is the same for the US and Germany as well, as well as many other European countries um, that are close to the UK and Germany in that region. Brilliant, um, thank you. And then in terms of the best time to travel, our, our main re rainy season is May through July. Um, so that's the time that people tend to avoid when going on a wildlife watching holiday. 
Um, but otherwise, you know, the rest of the year, we our doors are open. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Claire. Um, and then Nicola, we've also had um, a couple of questions about swimming in in the destination and or scuba diving so i wonder if you can enlighten us about are there beaches for a bit of r and r can you go swimming can you go scuba diving so in terms of scuba diving it's not something that again is traditionally built for so it's not an experience that we typically offer but in terms of beaches along the coastline we do have one of our largest rivers which is the Escobar river and when you go into that river we do have some more nature-based resorts and they are a great introduction into an eco lodge to see what it's like and along those you have um what we would call black water beaches where you can do some swimming kayaking um, you can do some boat tours as well as some amazing wildlife spotting in that area before you go into the river if you so choose. And like Kate mentioned, working with travel agents that have a lot of Guyanese, um, British Guyanese returning home, these opportunities are more weekend based that they would love to carry their families there too, or have some smaller packages just for them. Brilliant, thanks. And then to that extent, with regards to the, the Blackwater beaches that you mentioned, we had a question from Yvonne. Um, Yvonne was wondering, are there any lodges along the Mahaika Creek? Currently, there are no lodges along the Mahaika Creek, but there is a, it is a great destination for birding and wilderness explorers as well as uh, one or two other operators do have some birding tours. They're usually day tours. And the birds tend to be there very early in the morning or very late in the evening. So you might need your coffee or a, or some local Guyanese rum to get to make sure that you stay up to watch it. But those are the best times um, for that tour. Brilliant. Thank you. And then um, we had a question from Celine as well. Um, Celine was wondering, um, how safe is Guyana? Uh, I'm not sure you wanted Claire or Kate. Did you want to answer that one? Yes. I can lead off and both can support. Yeah, okay. I know safety now, um, it has two folds. So safety in terms of health and then safety in terms of just your general person. Um, for just the general person, I know Sagana is, as in any other country, we expect that, and we recommend that you take as much precaution as you would if you're traveling to another country as well especially in the more city areas. Um, Georgetown is a very vibrant city and like other cities that are that vibrant, they, are, they, they might do have some room for small petty crimes as well. But when you're with a tour operator or a local DMC, they will brief you before you come on in. We recommend that you carry as little cash as possible in those areas. When you go into the Rupununi and more into the rainforest and the savannas, the best advice we can give you is to listen to your guide. It's very safe in those areas. Um, the only threat might be some of those giants that Julia keeps talking about and alluding to, but your best um, support in those areas are your local guides. They see a lot that we might not be able to see because they are more in that nature aspect as well. But other than that, we do um, advise you take as much precaution as you would for any other area. Um, in terms of safety, in terms of health with the recent pandemic as well. We are doing everything that we can and working with a lot of local operators to ensure that your entire experience from getting on that plane to leaving Guyana is as safe as possible. And in that vein too, we also recommend that you play your part as we would play our parts as well. Wear your mask, follow them, and we'll all just have a great experience regardless. I don't know if Kate or um, Claire has anything else to add to that. Just to add really that um, obviously one of the focuses of the um, Guyana Tourism Authority at the moment is kind of the health and safety protocols um, in, in response to the, the current pandemic. But one of the points, because we're obviously talking about when flights can come in, etc., is mm -hmm. that Guyana is typically a very long lead destination. It takes a bit of planning. Normally the customer would inquire, they'd think about it for a few months. It's not the kind of destination that people book overnight. So whereas we think this is a great opportunity to be getting out there, communicating about Guyana, providing information, you know, we're not saying make bookings now. We're wary that, you know, the situation over the next few months is quite unclear. The numbers in Guyana are very low in terms of COVID, um, but really our promotion now is for much later on in the year and for 2021. 
And in terms of crime in, in, in Guyana, I mean, when you're outside of Georgetown, in, in Georgetown, certainly at night, you know, we'd advise people to take taxis, etc. But outside of Georgetown and in the interior, I think like Nicola, Nicola mentioned, you know, your biggest risk might be, uh, might be animal based or insect based rather than, <laughs> rather than yeah. anything else. I think if you're from a place where you're more used to sort of animals behind bars, dare I say, which is not the best experience of animals, it's so nice to see free animals. I guess it kind of makes you a little bit sort of like, oh, you know, what happens when I meet one? But I reckon they're probably more scared of you than the other way around, isn't it? So I think if the guides are, you know, very clear with their instructions and also um, helping demystify and show the gentleness of many of the creatures, uh, then you know you, you wouldn't you wouldn't go off on a nature adventure unless unless you had that kind of mindset I think so I'm sure I'm sure you, you haven't lost many tourists have you Nicola <laughs> or Claire no we haven't but they all come back <laughs> they all come back oh well, that's I, right then. if I could just say talking about booking at the moment because you know of the pandemic and everything we're working very closely with all our uh, who suppliers in Guyana to have very flexible booking conditions because we understand that people are still slightly nervous about paying deposits and what the cancellation charges would be. So as a destination, we're working all very closely together to encourage people you know, to, to make bookings. But if for any reason they can't because of COVID, you know, we will be as flexible as we can. And I know that's not always the case with other destinations. So we are all working very closely as a team on that. Fabulous. Any final questions there, George, before we move to the poll? Uh, yeah, we just had one more. This one might be for, for well, for any of the panellists, really. Um, we had Maria was wondering about, are there any FAM or press trips that we do? Um, we, we do occasionally do FAM and press trips. Um, we don't, unfortunately, because we're quite a... Um, you know, a remote destination, it's quite far away. We don't have the ability to do lots and lots every year, but certainly we do try and do at least one or two every year. So um, we're potentially looking at doing one maybe in March, 2021. Um, and that could be for media, depending on, you know, what, what, what they can offer Guyana in terms of coverage or exposure, um, or for trade. Um, and again, we would, we would, would consider all of those those opportunities on a on a one uh, one one by one basis. So, if people are interested in farm trips um, or or press trips, and they can of course get in touch with with us, and we can we can get back to them and let them know about forthcoming opportunities. And one of the things we are going to do is try and include those opportunities on the OTT platform. So in the section, I think it's at the moment it's called competitions, but we will we will try and include all the incentives, farm trip opportunities, events, etc., so that um, agents, tour operators know um, what we're up to and what opportunities they can apply for. And actually an easy way, um, I'm not sure if you've discovered it yet, um, everybody out there, um, but if you go to the suppliers tab on the OTT website, you'll see a whole list of, of different companies, including <clears throat> soon to be Guyana. If you follow Guyana's page, uh, then anything that happens with Guyana, so we, you'll be notified about, so you could be notified about any competitions, um, any news uh, such as opening news or anything that's really important. So I would encourage you to, when the course goes live, to follow Guyana. All it means is a little bell will be um, there on OTT next time you sign in and that will indicate that Guyana has news of some description and something exciting to say. Brilliant. Thanks, Julia. And um, just one final thing as well. Um, Trish, I see that you've asked about tour operators selling Guyana, just to let you know that on both the UK version and the US version, um, we'll be including a list of operators at Sal Guyana, so you'll be able to find them on the course. Um, so before we head into our final poll, did uh, was there any final remarks that the panelists wanted to make on the beauty of Guyana or selling Guyana? Go on, go on Claire. Um, one of my favourite statistics when I'm asked about Guyana um, is, you know, how many visitors do we have a year? and in the past, we said from the UK, we possibly have, or well, in general, three, three to 4,000 tourists a year who buy a complete package holiday. And if you think that's less than Machu Picchu gets in a day, it really brings across how remote and pristine and what a wonderful destination we can offer. Oh, that's quite a statistic. <laughs> quite staggering, that one. <laughs> 
I guess for me, the highlight of Guyana is just the pristine wilderness and just waking up to um, the noise of bird sounds and monkeys. And it really is just such a unique destination. So that would be my highlight. Thank you both. I guess on my end too, I know we didn't, um, we focused a lot on the nature and the remoteness of it. But once you get there, one of the most um, amazing experiences that it's pretty hard to put in words is when you go to these villages and you meet the people and you actually have a conversation with them and learn why they started their community projects, why, did, why are they putting such a focus on tourism and why they're there to welcome travelers today and as well. So I hope all of you and all of your clients do get a chance to see that one day. Thank you. Um, uh, just a quick mention as well. Um, any questions that we have missed, um, we'll be sure to answer in our follow up. Um, but Julia, should we take it into the final poll? Absolutely, yes. I'm, I'm sorry we haven't covered all of the questions that we could, but we would be here for some time, which just shows the um, uh, pent up interest in this emerging and beautiful, beautiful destination. So that's great. So I'll, I'll share when I send through the recording of this webinar, if you wish to share it with colleagues that couldn't make it today. We'll also share some contact details um, of Claire and the team at Guyana. So you can contact them for any photos, videos or any supplementary information um, that you might actually need. So, and of course, you know, the course is all there, packed full with everything uh, that you're going to need to know as well. So here we go with the final poll. And so do you feel inspired to sell Guyana for 2021 and beyond? And uh, let's just see how you're all feeling. Right, so six, almost 60% of you feel absolutely confident in selling it, which is fabulous. And some of you, understandably, 42% are saying that you just need a bit more information. Uh, and that's quite understandable as well. It is a new destination to many of you after all. And the, you know, information creates confidence. Confidence will absolutely engender the confidence in the travellers to, to go to the destination. And that's what we're all about. And that's what this webinar is all about. So thank you very much for taking the time to um, let us know about the poll. There you go, there's the results. So it uh, just remains for me to say um, thank you very much to our wonderful panel here today, uh, to Kate, Claire, to Nicola, and also to George. Uh, I think it's been really interesting and, and it's just been a sort of a, a, almost an hour and hour of, of pure beauty. And I think um, it's been a great escape for, for many of us here and huge amount of information for the trade, which is exactly the point. And um, I you know, wish your destination um, you know, well, in moving forward in, in being able to stay as pristine and as beautiful um, as you are and, and especially in terms of, of the whole COVID thing there let's hope numbers keep down and your borders can open as, as you hope um, really soon and I think there's many intrepid travellers that are itching to get there and experience the, the beauty of the location and, and all the animals and the you know, fauna and flora as they say uh, and I think it's wonderful and I'd love to go myself actually. So it's now on my bucket list <laughs> as of today. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, and thank you also to all of you OTT agents out there uh, for joining us this afternoon. I know it's an hour of your time, which is valuable time. And so I really appreciate you taking the time to learn about Guyana today as well. And I know you found it interesting and that's absolutely brilliant. So it's goodbye from me at, o at OTT and goodbye from the panel. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Bye. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.